Hey, where are you right now? I'm at home, damn it. It's my first day off in a while, honey. So could you just let me sleep? My husband has absolutely no clue. He has no idea how dire the situation is. My name is Morgan Coleman, and I'm 32 years old. I work in the sales department of a certain local company. I've been married to my husband, Troy, for five years now. We don't have any children yet, and we live in a quiet, peaceful life together, the two of us. We met in what would be considered a group date back in our underdog days. We had colleagues in each of our offices that were friends themselves, and they arranged a rather large group date of eight people all together. Four girls, four guys. According to Troy, he apparently fell in love with me the moment he set his eyes on me, and my first impression alone made him want to go out with me. But he was a genuine woman lover, so to speak, and that alone should make things a little bit suspicious. All of my friends advised against dating him, but he begged me to trust him to be faithful and loyal. After a lot of hesitation and hard thinking, I decided to let myself trust him to always do the right thing and went on to establish a long-term relationship of three years with him. He then proposed to me and after I accepted, we became engaged. My friends were so kind as to respect my decision. Soon after we got married, we were very much in love, and it was absolutely wonderful. Whenever we both got a day off, we pursued our common hobby, which was traveling, and took day trips to different places around the region. I always looked forward to those trips we took, and that's what drove me to work hard at my job. However, after three years of married life, the love we once had had become steadily colder and more distant. And to be honest, it was nowhere to be found. There were times where he'd live multiple days without ever responding to me whenever I said something to him. His attitude had changed so drastically. And so, to bring back the Troy I married, the happy, sprightly dude, I told him about what happened on a particular day, and I also invited him on trips, like the ones we used to take. But every time I did invite him, the response was pretty programmed at this point. Sorry, honey. Work's keeping me busy for a while. Trips will have to wait. But we haven't gone on a trip in so long. Up until not so long ago, we went to places and had so much fun. Remember? There were some of my favorite times, honey. What the hell is wrong with you? I told you I'm busy. And yet you still try to take me away from something that is clearly more important? Be serious. I'm sorry, but it's not like we don't have any days off anymore, and I think we could go one day pretty soon. Are you done yet? Talking about it's not gonna help. As you can see, his coldness is excruciating. Just between us, I sometimes cry myself to sleep because of this. Troy. My love, where have you gone? Eventually, I got fed up with this new Troy who took me for granted and gave up talking to him. What was worse, I slowly developed a sense of distrust in his loyalty because of this transformation. Could this sense of distrust be warning me of what's to come? I started to think about a bunch of things, and some of the thoughts terrified me kept on telling myself that the love is still there. It's just a phase. 
everything will be fine soon, and forcefully blinded myself to the painful truth. Time went on, and our relationship deteriorated. This actually helped me focus a lot more on my work, and my performance skyrocketed. I was offered a promotion before long. The position was quite the honor. Sales department manager. And since then, the number of business trips I had to take increased by quite a factor. And whenever I told Troy I had a business trip within the next couple of days, his mood would improve substantially. So your business trip starts tomorrow, right? How long will it be? Two nights, three days. Gotcha, gotcha. Two nights, three days. Be careful, okay? Uh, sure. Satisfied with a bit more knowledge about my business trip, he didn't ask any more questions, plopped down on the couch, turned on the TV, and smoked a cigarette with a large smile on his face. Make sure you take care of the cigarette when you're done, okay? It's always still burning, and I'm the one who turns it off later. We'll get in trouble one day. I gotcha, honey, I gotcha. I'll make sure it's turned off. His antisocial tendencies completely disappear whenever a business trip of mine draws near, and his terms of endearment come back, too, along with actual conversation. That was the final straw. The suspicions I'd had about what our relationship had become were now a reality, and I couldn't run from it any longer. My husband was having an affair. I'd known about this not too long after his attitude changed. The problem was that I refused to accept it. He really was the woman lover that everyone warned he was, and it was my own fault I decided to trust him. Such was the situation for some time, and I was at a loss for what to do. But, one day, it was decided that I was going to take a long business trip of around two months. I told Troy the news, and he said, Two months is a long time. Are you coming back on weekends? I'm going to a city that takes over three hours to get to, even by bullet train, so it seems like I can only come back once or twice. But, honestly, I think I'll stay over there the whole time. I do want to spend some time looking for new places to enjoy. That's fair, I guess. Damn. Two whole months away from each other. Lonely yet? Yeah, I am. Just take good care of yourself, honey. The moment he heard from me that I was going away on a business for two months, he'd pretty much reverted back to the Troy I fell in love with. As I mentioned, there were times he wouldn't even talk to me for days on end. But after my announcement, he was in such a good mood that he came to talk to me every day. But the things he would say would be something like, Will you be coming home in the afternoon when your work's done? Or do you think you'll be back at night sometime after, I don't know, 7 o'clock? I have no idea. It's still a ways away, and it all depends on the schedule. Ah, I see. But I guess you'll know the day before, right? Why do you want to know about that so much? Are you planning to bring someone inside or something? Wh where did that come from? Perish the thought, honey. Of course I wouldn't do anything like that. He was, without a doubt, shook after I said what I said. I got pretty angry with him. He was trying to lie his way out of this, and he was doing a worse job than a newborn chimp. It was blatantly obvious he intended to bring another woman inside the house, but I honestly didn't give a good goddamn anymore. It had come to the point where I'd started to think that maybe it would be the best for me to just move away from home. 
and permanently transfer to the branch I was going to for two months. The day I was to leave arrived. Troy sent me off with a big smile on his face. The message was that he wanted me to hurry and get the hell out of there. A few days went by, but not once did he ever call me, send me a text, or contact me in any other form. I believed he was having fun with his unfaithfulness, but the fact that he never kept in touch depressed me a good deal. A few weeks after I went on my business trip, I'd pretty much forgotten all about Troy. The people at my new branch welcomed me with a very nice party, and since there were many who were my age or around there, they took me places on days off, allowing me the chance to get to know the region quite a bit. That life of mine was just amazing, and I never once felt guilty about forgetting all about my husband. My boss, Mr. Kruger, who was also transferred to the same branch temporarily along with me, was so kind to me and had become something like an older brother to me. He took me out to dinner sometimes, and he would always be there for me whenever I needed to talk to someone. Mr. Kruger had become a very important person to me, mentally, and even now, I really appreciate his help. Because of Mr. Kruger, and because of my very full social life at my new branch, I really did forget about Troy's very existence. However, an incident would occur that would jumpstart my memory about him, and the incident itself was a terrible one. One night, I was just about to decide going out for an evening drink when my phone rang. I didn't recognize the number, but I answered anyway. It turned out to be the landlord of the apartment Troy and I were living in. Once upon a time, we did keep in touch with the landlord because our apartment is pretty old and we wanted to make some renovations. But since then, the calls and the negotiations had become relatively sparse. But it was always Troy who negotiated with them, so the phone call was an unexpected surprise. The contents of the call were even more shocking. They called to check in whether or not I was okay, considering the fact that our apartment was burning. They had tried calling Troy to no avail, and reached out to me instead to check if we were all right. They sounded noticeably shaken, and my own legs were trembling. My husband should still be at home, and the fact that he never answered, even after multiple calls, suggested that the worst had happened. While I did say the love I once had for him had gone stone cold, we'd been a family for five years after all, and there was still something there. If anything happened to him, I felt my pulse race. I assured the landlord that I was fine and mentioned I was on a business trip elsewhere. I then called Troy to see if he was all right. Of course, he didn't answer the first time and he wouldn't until I called him for the fifth time. Troy, where the heck are you? I'm at home. As always, it's my day off today. Could you just let me sleep, please? It's such a pain in the ass right now. I see. So you're at home? Glad to know you're okay. What the hell is this? You feel like you have to freaking spy on me just because we haven't kept in touch for a while? Damn, I never knew you could be such a bitch. I was just so fed up with his bullshit. All lingering feelings for him were brutally slaughtered that moment, and I didn't care what happened to him anymore. I guess he's having so much fun, even when our apartment suffered a terrible accident. I became so ashamed that I ever loved this bastard and wondered why I never paid more attention to my friend's warnings. I called back our landlord and told him Troy was also safe and sound to my secret disappointment. They were so relieved, you could almost hear a crack in their voice. I was shell-shocked to discover my apartment had burned to a crisp, but the silver lining was that I'd brought most of my stuff along with me on my business trip. So the shock was only temporary, 
and not too overwhelming. All of my clothes, my accessories, and my portable belongings were all with me. And I had just forgot all about Troy once again and went on with my life, because Troy had the superhuman strength to sleep through the burning of his own living quarters. The next day, I was on a sightseeing trip with a couple of friends when my husband called me. It had been almost a full day since the landlord informed me about the fire, and he wasn't even at the house when it happened. Where the hell was he then? On a trip somewhere with his Cinderella? And what the hell was he thinking, never calling the landlord back? If he'd called them beforehand, the situation would have been much different. Yo, the apartment had a freaking fire. Could you explain to me what's been going on? Hang on, you're alive? Well, that's an unexpected surprise. And also, you told me you were at home when the fire was going on, so I thought you knew what was going on already. How are you so calm about this mess, admitting you knew it and never bothered to tell me? Let me jog your memory. I directly asked you where you were right after the landlord called me about the fire. You told me you were, and I quote, at home as always. That was more than enough info to assume you knew there was a fire. And then I thought you would be fine and I shouldn't worry about it, since I am such a bitch sometimes. I must be married to Mr. Indestructible. You can sleep through an incident as serious as your house burning down. I only stated obvious facts, and even Troy couldn't conjugate stupid counterargument. He fell silent. He probably realized there was no point in blaming me for the whole situation. He then said, in a quiet, grave voice, What are we going to do now? We lost our apartment, the place we live, and now we've got nowhere to go. Did he just say we? Is he really dumb enough not to understand what's happening between us in that moment? There's no we anymore, Troy. I'm not coming back. Not now. Not ever. I didn't have to see his face to know Troy was shocked once I said that. Eh? What the hell do you mean by that? I'm so fed up with your cheating ass. I never should have trusted you to do the right thing. The truth is that you were over at your stupid lover's place overnight. And that's why you didn't even know there was a frickin' fire back at your place. No, that's not... You can't deny it, can you? I'd been suspicious of you for a while now, and every single clue led to the same conclusion. I can't freaking take it anymore. And now hang on a second. I will not. I'm filing for divorce, and you can't stop me. There was a deadly silence for a short time. Then... Troy clicked his tongue in a way you would if you were annoyed with something, and replied, All right, then. I'll gladly divorce the likes of you. You're so naive and so random that I'm not confident we'll have a healthy married relationship anymore. And since you're the one who kind of set the house on fire, so to speak, I hope you'll cooperate with the compensation. I swear... His IQ just kept getting lower and lower. What the heck was he insinuating? Was he accusing me of setting our home on fire myself? I never even set foot in that city for close to four weeks at this point, much less my own home. I could not comprehend how I could be the cause of the apartment burning down. This morning, the landlord called me to inquire if I was all right. I asked them what had caused the fire, and guess what? It was your carelessness. I warned you about properly putting out your cigarette when you were done, and you never listened. And now, you paid the ultimate price. Huh? Don't tell me you don't remember. How many dozens of times have I told you to take care of your burning cigarettes before you left the house? It's not even funny. 
I told you it could be a big fire hazard, and I was really careful. But in the end, darkness prevails, I guess. You inconvenienced a whole lot of people living in that building, and that's why it's your legal responsibility to compensate for your careless mistake. And also, because you were having an affair behind my back and left the house vacant that night, your crimes have become a lot more serious. This whole mess is your fault, plain and simple, and there's no way you can find a way out of the blame. Huh. Well, I guess I can agree with the notion that I was the cause of the fire. But at the end of the day, it was only an impressive streak of bad luck. I'll grant you your last wish. Let's split up. Talking to you is becoming such a freaking bore. I have to ask you to send the divorce documents my way once they're ready. And the compensation... I just have to pay back the other pricks in the building, right? If I don't have to pay anything to you, the total amount shouldn't be really anything ridiculous. Paying will be a walk in the park. You can confiscate the rest of my belongings, too. I don't need you to tell me that. That was the last that was said between us, and then the line was dead. My married life of five years, the one I'd hoped would last until the end of my days, came to an end. Up until this point, I thought that once I went through with a divorce declaration, I would break down, cry, be unable to work properly, and drown my sorrows in the coming days. But in reality, I didn't feel anything negative at all. If anything, a sense of calm that I haven't felt in years engulfed me, and I was feeling great. The divorce files from Troy never came even after a week, and I asked the lawyer I hired to check in on the proceedings. Another week passed, and I finally got a text about that, but it was from Troy himself. I have a favor to ask you. Please come back home. Details revealed that he just didn't have enough money to pay for the compensation he owed everyone he jeopardized. He told his lover that she was also responsible for keeping him from stopping the fire, maybe even preventing it in the first place, and demanded she help him pay back the other tenants. She refused and then dumped him. You always stood beside me, even through difficult times, and you always trusted me to do what was right, didn't you? You always believed in me, didn't you? You'll forgive me this time too, right? Troy, I think you need a reality check and maybe a brain transplant on the side. I'm never going to forgive you. Never. I'm embarrassed I ever forgave you in the first place. You heard from my lawyers, right? I have the papers here, but I don't want to divorce you. And I'm going to stay with you because I love you. I always have, and I always will. I'm not divorcing you. He suddenly started to whine like an immature child and somehow managed to succeed in making me feel even less of him. I couldn't consider him human anymore, and the fact that I once loved this scumbag, I wanted to throw up, but I kept my cool. I'm actually getting married again, just so you know. What? So you were cheating on me too, weren't you? No. Once my divorce with you becomes set in stone, someone was so kind as to confess their feelings to me. Of course, my divorce isn't official yet, so I'm holding off giving him my answer until it becomes so. And he isn't pressuring me or anything. He's very understanding of what my situation's been for quite some time now. I'll say this one more time. I'm only going to respond to him once our divorce is legally official and when we aren't married anymore. The hell is that kind of stupid excuse? That's not gonna work on me, bitch. You were having an affair. An affair you were having, I say. Don't you dare put me in the same category of human as you. I've never, I repeat, never had any feelings towards any other men while I was married to you. It's so exomatic that even reminding you that was the case is embarrassing, to be honest. When I told him that I was going to remarry, I meant it with all of my heart and soul. 
Of course, it's not at all like I have a relationship with that person, because as long as I am married to someone, I remain faithful until the end, whatever the end itself may be. I mentioned a Mr. Kruger who'd gone on this business trip with me, and who was always there as my emotional mentor. When I told him my concerns about my current relationship with Troy, and how I was considering divorce, he of course provided advice and consolation, but then he confessed he had feelings, and even went on to propose to me. Of course he knew that I was still a married woman, and that nothing was going to happen between us as long as I didn't divorce my current husband. And it wasn't like he was pressuring me or blackmailing me at all. Perish the thought if you please. I know more than anyone else how kind a man he is, and I thought that with him, I would be happy for as long as I live. And that's why I told him I would give him his answer once my divorce was settled. Ah, oh, I'm gonna sue a freaking slut like you, going behind my back to have an affair. That has to be compensated. Surely you aren't dumb enough to know that it's only obvious you compensate. You stab me in the back. Yeah, I see you're putting yourself on a shelf in the attic and forcing the blame upon me who, by the way, still is faithful to you through and through. Do you even understand what I just told you? I am innocent in this whole thing. I never looked in another man's direction, let alone stab you in the back. But the truth remains, when this nightmare is over, I intend to marry him, and that'll never change. I never asked you for compensation, now did I? If you want it to stay that way, I suggest you fill out the divorce files and send them back to me, sir. That did it. That was the thing he needed to hear, because after a rather long pause, the only thing he could say in response was, I understand. And was just about to hang up, but right as he said those two words, a gentle, powerful hand grabbed my arm, holding my phone. My boss, Mr. Kruger, stepped into the conversation. Pleasure to meet you, Troy. Now, you listen to me. I've been listening to your chit-chat with Morgan, and you actively tried to make yourself the victim in order to perhaps be relieved of your crimes and place her as the target of blame. So you're the bastard who stole my darling Morgan from me. Thanks to you, she's refusing to come home to me. I'm gonna find you, and I'm gonna ruin your neck or die trying. This coming from someone who had an affair during the marriage. Do you know how long I've been waiting for Morgan's response to what I told her? There's no way to get her back, good sir. Give in to the consequences of your selfish actions, repent, and take responsibility by filling out those divorce files. You little... <sighs> Fine. You want the files? I'll send you the goddamn files. Tell me your address one of these days, and you'll get those files. My lawyer will stop by to get them. So let me know when you're done with them. And then the call was over for real this time. To be honest with you, I was a little bit surprised when Mr. Kruger suddenly stepped in, and at first, I was confused about what I should do, but he did me a huge favor and forcefully stated my terms and my place, and took an enormous off of my shoulders. Thereafter, Troy struggled to settle the compensation he owed to multiple tenants of the apartment building who was affected by the fire. He loaned money, placing himself in debt, but even that wasn't enough. And soon afterward, he went completely bankrupt. There was a smidge of pity left for him, and I never proceeded with demanding him compensation for having an affair, but I did demand some from his partner. Troy's job found out he went completely bankrupt and asked him why. Troy, perhaps hoping it was good to get him out of financial trouble, apparently told them the truth. Soon after, the news of his disloyalty spread across the grapevine at his job. And the more surprising news of his divorce spread even more quickly. His lover was apparently another employee at his job, and they were both fired within a couple days. Even though she'd already dumped him, Troy asked her to start over together, especially 
since they both needed all the help they could get, now that they were unemployed. She responded that she had no use of a man with an unbelievable amount of debt on his shoulders and abandoned him a second time. He couldn't find another proper full-time job later on because of his reputation. And now, I hear he's somehow surviving by working a couple part-time jobs here and there. As for me, I responded to Mr. Kruger's proposal with a yes soon after my divorce was settled. Honestly, it still wasn't too long ago that a man had betrayed me, and that left me with doubt about men's trustworthiness in general. Even after I told him all of my doubts and suspicions, he said he still wanted to be with me regardless. How could I refuse such a flexible gentleman? Two years later, we got engaged. I discovered I was pregnant mere days after getting married, so I quit my job soon after, and now I support my husband as a housewife. A new life is going to be born one day very soon, so I've set myself on not dwelling on the past and focus on my happiness in this moment of time, and I hope it lasts forever.